Let's talk about several topics related to the production of data, producing data. One idea is the notion of sampling, and, and uh, we know that sampling I involves taking a sample from an overall population. All right, we talked about that a little bit before. Experiments uh, now have to do with collecting data in another way, and, and the, the difference between these two is kind of important. The sampling idea generally does not disrupt the population. That is, if we're taking an opinion poll, we're not going to sway the opinion of the entire nation by taking a sample to find out what that opinion is. All right, that's kind of the nature of sampling. Experimentation, however, uh, will disrupt a portion of the population. Uh, the goal in experiments is to measure the effect of some kind of intervention. And in order to measure the effect of an intervention on the whole population, generally you need to intervene uh, into a portion of that population. And uh, a good example is this. It's, it's given in your text. It's an example that has to do with, uh, in 1778, Captain James Cook discovered the Hawaiian Islands. Well, in doing so, he brought with him uh, some presents to the inhabitants of some goats. And over the years, the goats multiplied. Well, there is a particular plant uh, a lot of particular plants on the Hawaiian Islands, but, but one in this discussion is the silver sword plant. It is indigenous only to the Hawaiian Islands, and uh, that plant has decreased uh, in, its, um, in the number of plants on the Hawaiian Islands. There used to be thousands of them, now they're, they're much less. And the reason why they have decreased in population is important. Now, in order to, to determine whether or not the goats had anything to do with the decrease in the number of silver sword plants, we can make an, or, or hypothesize or come up with some kind of experiment. And the experiment would need to involve preventing the goats from coming into some enclosed area, that is, fencing an area. Now, you would have to fence an area, you see over here, and not fence an area over here and measure the number of silver sword plants in both areas. It's more complicated than that. The two areas would need to have exactly the same climate because we don't want climate to come into play. You see, we only want to measure the effect of the goats. We don't want to measure a difference in climate. We don't want to measure a difference in soil, for example. We don't want to measure and we can come up with any number of other situations. Erosion, for example, has to be the same in both areas. The number of people that come into those areas has to be exactly the same. So at any rate, the, the notion of experimentation um, has to do with sort of taking a, a portion of the population and, uh, and performing the experiment on that portion. So you affect the population in performing the experiment, whereas with sampling you don't, you're not affecting the population. Simulation is the idea of, of simulating um, an experiment rather than intervening in the entire population. Uh, drug companies would, would traditionally do this. I mean, if a drug company came up with an idea of, gee, if we mix this substance and that substance and this substance together and inject this into a human body, then we might cure diabetes, let's say. Well, let's try it on you. You, you, know, you want to be injected, the, uh, the, the first person injected with this cure? Well, I don't think so. Uh, I think we want to test this a little bit. We want to do a bench test or a lab test with this. We want to have a cell culture here and, and uh, have it grow. We want to inject or introduce the cure into this cell culture and see if the outcome that's expected or hoped for results. We want to try this on a group of rats. You see, we want to do some experimentation, some simulation outside of the population itself. That's what simulation is all about. The idea of census is the notion that uh, we are taking our information from the entire population. And this is easy as long as the population is small. If we're talking about the average height of students within a particular classroom, then would you uh, say, well, let's do a sampling. 
We have 20 people in the class. Let's uh, sample the heights of five students in the classroom and find the uh, average height of those five students and with some probability of assurance that we have the average height of the entire, you see we make the infer inference for the average height of all of the students within the class. Well that's not very practical. Our population is so small that we can just use the census approach and we can uh, as our population take the height of all of the students within the class and then calculate the average directly. On the other hand, if we're talking about the average height of students, male or female, throughout the entire nation, then we cannot possibly use the census approach. So the census idea using uh, items from the entire population. Uh, surveys. Now, surveys uh, typically are used when sampling is performed. A survey, a lot of times, will be a questionnaire. And the questionnaire may be a written questionnaire or it could be a verbal questionnaire. If uh, you sometimes may see people in, in malls that are going through and saying, may I ask you a few questions? You know, something like that. Well, they're taking a survey. And they want your opinion about something and usually they'll ask a battery of questions. Well, these, uh, the, the surveying idea uh, again, is a study unto itself. This is a, a very technical, or can be a very technical idea to structure the survey, to structure the questions in certain ways so that you don't affect the outcome of the thing that you're trying to test. Uh, you see, I mean, if, if, you're, if you're trying to find out people's opinion about a certain political candidate, for example, you, you would not want to go up to people and say, you wouldn't vote for this guy, would you? You know, because that is going to bias or change the opinion of the people that you're asking the question of. If you want it to be unbiased, then you have to structure the question in a more presentable way. And there are some very subtle things that can, can come into play in the surveying idea. How the surveyor is dressed, for example. Um, how, whether the person is male or female. Uh, whether, the, you know, the attitude that the surveying person has. All of that comes into play. And with a, with a questionnaire, the font of the questionnaire comes into play. How many questions there are. How elaborate they are arranged on the page. You know, all of, a lot of different subtleties can come into play here and those subtleties can be studied. Now, we, you know, we talked about bias involved in the surveys and, and the biases are sometimes hidden. It's just another matter or another topic to be considered when producing data. And uh, the hidden biases can be very subtle as we talked about just a, a little while ago. The, the matter of other variables comes into play when you're trying to, to sort of figure out a cause and effect having to do with two ideas. The two ideas, for example, might be um, ticket prices at football games and the attendance at football games. What's the correlation between those two? Well, you might say, gee, I went to a football game it was the Super Bowl. And boy, those tickets were really expensive and the stadium was really full. So, gee, the correlation might be that high prices and high attendance go hand in hand. All we need to do to fill up the stadium is raise prices. You see? Now, does that make any sense? No, of course it doesn't. There are other variables involved here. I mean, after all, this is the Super Bowl, you see. And so, it, that's an, the other variable that comes into play in this situation. And uh, a lot of these cause and effects things, cause and effect ideas, uh, have to do with many, many variables. And so uh, all of those variables have to be considered to arrive at some conclusion about cause and effect.